I've got to fix Miss Kathy a nice breakfast. You know, this is her last day. Yeah, I know. Say, maybe I'm not hungry because I'm getting the measles again. What? Yeah, I'll bet that's it. You better tell Kathy she'll have to stay and nurse me some more. Uh-huh. So that's what's ailing you. Now, listen here, honey. She can't stay here forever. She's got a little child of her own to take care of. Why, you're lucky that you gave her the measles. that She's been gone a week ago. Come on now, eat up, huh? Well, good morning. Oh, good morning. How is everybody this beautiful, bright, sunshiny morning? Awful. Awful? What's with him? His best girl's leaving. What? Rusty, I'm surprised at you. My son mooning over a girl? One girl? That's like standing in the middle of a candy factory and crying because you lost one gumdrop. <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand. I think I understand. You had another fight with Ruthie, huh? Ruthie Matson, is that it? Well, don't worry about it. Girls aren't that important. Don't lose your appetite over them. It isn't Ruthie. No? No, it's Miss Kathy. You want me to fix you something for breakfast? Kathy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's your last day here. Yeah, so it is. Yeah. Well, what can I fix you for breakfast? Some pancakes, some eggs, some French toast? I'm not hungry. <laughs> well, maybe you ain't, but I bet Miss Kathy is. I'm going to fix her tray. I'll take it up to her. Never mind. You, you sit down. I'll take it up to but her. But, Daddy, I really ought to be the one to take it up to her. After all, she was my nurse, not yours. Yeah, but I hired her. No, you didn't. Aunt Liz did. Well, I paid the bills. I gave her the measles. I paid for those, too. <laughs> Let's be fair. We'll both take it up. I got a better idea. We'll flip a coin. Okay. Go ahead. Call it. Heads. All right, we'll both take it up. <laughs> you want to finish your breakfast? That kid is really gone on Kathy, isn't he? Mm-hmm. It makes two, don't it? <laughs> huh? Oh, Mr. Williams, it don't take a swami to tell that you like that girl. Well, I guess I like her. I mean, what, what's not to like? Nothing. So where are you going on your first date? Date? Yeah. Date. I haven't even thought about asking her for a date. Oh, uh, no? Why don't you tell your ears that? My ears? Yeah. They flap every time you see her. <laughs> How come you women always have to be matchmakers? Well, I believe that if the match is good, it ought to be lit. <laughs> <laughs> she is a widow. She's young. Attractive and eligible, and you, you're eligible. <laughs> Thanks a lot, but stop pushing, eh, Louise? Hmm? A smart man asks a girl for a date in his own good time. Is that so? Well, next time you see that smart man, you tell him he'd better not wait too long or he might miss out. <laughs> miss out? What's miss out? I'll ask her for a date, she'll say yes, and that's it. Just like that, huh? Just like that. Look, I haven't had any trouble getting dates. For your information, I've met quite a few attractive young ladies lately, and none of them has turned me down. What do you do, give green stamps? <laughs> I don't give green stamps. I just happen to know about the female sex, that's all. So did Samson. <laughs> all right, so we lost that battle. Doesn't mean we lost the whole war. Mr. Williams, what are you talking about? I'm talking about the battle of the sexes. You see, Louise, ever since the world began, this battle, this mortal combat has been raging between male and female. And 99 times out of 100, the male of the species has emerged victorious. And do you know why? Because he strikes at the psychological moment. And that's what I intend to do. So, I will ask for my date in my own good time. Don't you think you're making a mistake in parting all this valuable information to the enemy? <laughs> what enemy? There's only you and me here. This may come as a great shock to you, Mr. Williams, 
but I'm fighting for the girls. <laughs> they treated me just like a queen. Breakfast in bed, everything. I know, darling. Mommy misses you, too, but we'll be together tomorrow. Grandma will bring you home in the morning, and I'll be there waiting for you. That's right, darling. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Come in. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Good morning, Nurse Kathy. Good morning to you. Well, how nice to have two gentlemen bring me my breakfast. It's our honor, madame. Let me pull it up a little closer and make you more I'll comfortable. I'll help you. Don't touch it. You'll be spilling things now. Cut it out. Well, I haven't worked in the cafes all these years without knowing a little bit about service. Madame? Oh, bon appétit. <laughs> Oh, it's perfectly all kind. No damage, no serious. We'd better get another blanket. Oh, that's all right. I mean, cornflakes in bed can be pretty ticklish. <laughs> Everything's perfectly fine. I'm terribly sorry. They're awfully clumsy of me. They have the springs fixed or something. I'm awfully sorry. Oh, that's all right. Uh, coffee? Fine. 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 A little cream? Just a little. There we are. Fine. I'm really terribly sorry. Now, you just go right ahead and enjoy it. <laughs> better if I sat over there in that chair and you got into bed. No, I just... Uh, thank you. Much safer. No, I, I just won't sit down, that's all. Oh, you know, I feel silly having breakfast in bed. I'm perfectly well. Well, <laughs> stop thinking about yourself. I mean, think about us. After all, we don't very often get a chance to serve a lovely lady, eh, Russ? How should I know? I haven't had a chance. <laughs> stop squawking, huh? Rusty, Ruthie Matson's here. I can't talk to her right now. Yeah. Don't say that. Ruthie's your friend. Now, you go down and talk to her. But I can't right now. Kathy likes me to read the paper to her while she eats. You go talk to Ruthie. I'll take care of Kathy. You go talk to Ruthie. No, you talk to Ruthie. Now, listen here, Rusty. When I tell you go down and talk to Ruthie, I mean go down and talk to Ruthie. And no arguments. Now, give me that paper. Now, go on downstairs. Mrs. O'Hara is our guest here. Now, I want her to have a nice, peaceful breakfast, so go on. <laughs> Bring okay. me a clean blanket and right. a, a washcloth out of the bathroom. Okay. I'll put this over here and rescue some of it, honey. All right, Louise. I'll have my coffee over there. Yes, it's better. And uh, now, what kind of dress do you want me to press for your date tonight? What date? Oh, the one that you're going to have with Mr. Williams. Well, I'm not going out with Mr. Williams. What's the matter? Don't you save green stamps? <laughs> well, you know Mr. Williams likes you, don't you? Well... Uh, and you like him, too, don't you? Well, of course I like him. What's not to like? Well, you better watch yourself. Watch myself? Ever since the world began, the battle of the sexes have been waging. And 99 times out of 100, the male of the species emerges the victor. And do you know why? Because at the psychological moment, he strikes. And he asks the girl for a date in his own good time, and she always accepts. What are you talking about? <laughs> Mr. Williams has given me a history lesson a little while ago. <laughs> oh, he was? Mm -hmm. And according to his version, the male species is always the victor? Ninety-nine times out of a hundred. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. well, it seems to me Mr. Williams' his history is a little ancient. <laughs> Maybe we better give him a refresher course. Do you mean to say that if he asks you for a date, you're not going to say yes? Well, of course I'll say yes, but uh, in my own good time. <laughs> Got any idea when this time's going to be? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think I'll just let him chase me until I catch him. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is going to be a very interesting game. You mind if I apply for the popcorn concession? <laughs> And why he's always busy when I want to see him. He's always busy? Well, ever since he had the measles, he didn't choose me at the square dance and he stopped carrying my books. Hmm. And worst of all, I didn't know why. 
I guess in these cases, the woman's always the last one to know. <laughs> but I finally learned what it's all about. You did? What's it all about? Oh, you wouldn't be interested. Yes, I would. What did you learn? That your son, Rusty, was in Compton's and was buying a steady ring. So he was in Compton's buying a steady ring. He's probably going to give it to you. Well, that's the whole trouble. He already gave me one. That cad. <laughs> yes, three months ago. Hmm. That's what I want to see him about. I'm going to give it right back to him. I'm not going to play second fiddle to any girl. Oh, hi, Ruthie. Rutha, will you? I want to talk to you. Not now. I'm busy. Rusty, who is she? <laughs> <laughs> Ruthie, a man doesn't like to be spied on. Well, who is she? You can give her this. I don't want it anymore. Oh, you can keep that. I got her a better one. <laughs> that I haven't got? That's a very good question. What do you say you and I go upstairs and find out? You mean she's here? Mm-hmm. Would you like to meet her? I certainly would. <laughs> well, in that case, we'll go up. Come along. Gee, it would have been so nice to have you for a father-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come in. There she is. There's the siren that stole your boyfriend. But she's so old, Mr. Williams. <laughs> yes, but well preserved, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Mrs. O'Hara, may I present Miss Ruthie Matson? Oh, how do you do? Gee, I can't blame Rusty for liking you, because you're so pretty. But you know, you should have an older boyfriend, like Mr. Williams. Yeah. <laughs> Real old. You know, I think there's been a little misunderstanding, Ruthie. Why don't you sit down and we'll have a nice woman-to-woman -woman talk? In that case, I, I think I'd better leave. Oh, no, sit down and learn something. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Professor. You know, Ruthie, maybe you're not using the right approach with Rusty. What do you mean? Well, you've got to know how to handle a man. Oh, I'm glad I stayed. This I've got to hear. <laughs> you see, Ruthie, men are very vain creatures. If you flatter them, you can get them to do anything you want. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Quiet. Try it on Rusty. Tell him what a wonderful guy he is, what a, uh, a great baseball player he is. He'll lap it up like cream. Obviously, Mrs. O'Hara, you've had very little experience with men. Ruthie, if you try that flattered routine on Rusty, he'll laugh at you. He's too smart. He's like his father. Why do you that ring I bought for you, Cap? Oh, Ruthie. I'm glad you're still here. Where's that ring you were going to give back to me? I need it. Well, come on. Where is it? Oh, well, I've changed my mind, Rusty. I could never part with your ring. Huh? <laughs> you great, big, wonderful baseball player. Great, big... What are you talking about? I'm talking about you. Ooh, what muscles. <laughs> See you later. Gosh, all these years and I never even noticed them. <laughs> Don't be so smug. He'll see through that in a minute. Ten to one, he ends up twisting her arm to get his ring back. More likely, he'll end up trying to unwind himself from around her little finger. Is that so? It never fails. Well, you seem to be an authority on the subject. What do you say we discuss it at great length tonight at dinner, just you and I? Dinner? Yeah, I thought we'd celebrate your getting over the measles by going out and having dinner, just the two of us. Oh, thank you. But I can't go. There's a real nice place over on 58th Street, and there's... You can't go! <laughs> Did you say you can't go? That's right. But you can't say you can't go. Why not? Because ever since the... I mean, uh... <laughs> well, it's not polite to come into a person's home and have the measles and leave. Sorry. Hey, you really mean it, don't you? Afraid so. 
No. 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 She. <laughs> Mr. Williams' face when you turned him down. Oh, it would have been worth it. How many more times are you going to make him ask you before you say yes? Oh, I don't know. I think I'll just play it by ear. <laughs> well, enjoy yourself, honey. But on the other hand, there's an old saying that a girl that plays hard to get sometimes don't get got. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't worry about that, Louise. I have the situation well in hand. You mean that we're going to march him into the ambush and then charge? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, man, we women are rewriting history today. <laughs> You're leaving soon, huh? In a little while. Well, Mrs. O'Hara, I may not be here when you leave, and I, I just want you to know that we've all enjoyed having you and appreciate so much the tender and loving care you gave my son when he was ill. And I hope that someday soon we'll meet again. Goodbye. <laughs> We blew the dude. <laughs> what? Nothing. Nothing. How'd you think you'd want to go out tonight? You've been cooped up for a whole week. I've been away for quite a while, and I've got a lot of straightening out to do at home. All right, so tomorrow's. Where have your kids been? Having ice cream sodas. She bought. <laughs> <laughs> you let a girl buy you an ice cream soda? She insisted. She says it's a privilege to be with such a charming, intelligent, wonderful baseball player as me. And he's got he's also the best football player in our class. I'll go on now. Yes, you are. You're just being too modest. And you know something? He's not going to wear a helmet anymore when he plays. You're not going to wear a helmet anymore? How come, Rusty? Ruthie says it hides my wavy hair. <laughs> Upstairs, Ruthie. I'll show you how I hold the ball when I pitch a curve. Just look at that strong, manly profile. <laughs> Holy smoke, that kid's been brainwashed. <laughs> oh, hum. Ha, oh, hum. Stop taking bows, will you? He's just a kid. He hasn't been around. The longer they're around, the easier they are to handle. Is that so? In other words, men are just dopes, huh? Well, I'm only going by the evidence. <laughs> well, why don't we go to dinner tonight and discuss this whole thing? Well, I really shouldn't, but... Uh... Forget it. Skip it. You don't have to go. I'm not going to beg you anymore. You don't want to go? Maybe somebody else will. Somebody from this here little black book right here. Yeah, here's a nice, sweet little number. For your information, Mrs. O'Hara, the Williams has got along pretty good before they got the measles. <laughs> Dixie? Hi, y'all, sugar babe. <laughs> this is Danny Boy. Yeah, Danny Williams showing up. <laughs> well, I know it's been a long time, but I've been thinking about you. Say, Peaches, how about you and I having dinner together tonight? Da 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 da! Charge! <laughs> Clock is fine, sugar. Okay, you candy yam, you. <laughs> All right, sweetie pie. That's a friend of mine. I knew it wasn't an enemy. She must be awfully pretty, this uh, Trixie. Name's Dixie. <laughs> and lucky, too. Lucky? Well, it, it isn't every girl who's fortunate enough to have a big star like you interested in her. Oh, come on now. You get that big star stuff. I'm no big star. I'm just an ordinary guy. Oh, yes, you are. You're very special. 
You're not only very talented, you can carry on a very intelligent conversation. Your views on subjects are very deep and profound. <laughs> well, thank you. I didn't think you noticed. <laughs> Would you believe it? I've had only one year of high school? You mean you're not a college man? Nope. It's just as well, too. Could you imagine my nose with a crew cut? <laughs> <laughs> There's that delightful sense of humor. Thank you. <laughs> would you do one thing for me before I go? What's that? Uh, would you give me an autographed picture of yourself? You really want one? Oh, I'd be so proud. Uh, I could show it to all my friends, and they'd just be green with envy. Well, I'd be very happy to give you one. Wait till you see what I'm going to write here. Oh, I know it'll be something very clever, like you're always saying. <laughs> <laughs> to Kathy, though measles aren't so nice to get, without them we'd have never met. <laughs> In addition to everything else, you're a poet. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that. You know, I, I really do envy Trixie. It's Dixie. <laughs> I really wish I were in her shoes. You could be, you know. Oh? I'd rather go out with you. You would? You know I would. And I could call up Dixie and cancel our date. Would you do that? On one condition. That you must go out with me tonight, and tomorrow night, and the next night, etc., etc., etc. <laughs> What can a girl say when a man is so masterful? Yeah. Since we're going to be seeing so much of each other, I guess I won't be needing this little black book anymore. No, I guess you won't. Well, when you go upstairs, do me a favor. Put it on Rusty's desk, will you? On Rusty's desk? Yeah, he uses it from time to time. <laughs> Rusty uses this. Why not? It's his. <laughs> this show roster, West Side Little League, umpires and coach. All right, sugar. After all, I had to let you chase me till I caught you. <laughs> out tonight I don't know if it's cloudy or bright cause I only have eyes for you dear the moon may be high but I can't see a thing in the sky Cause I only have eyes for you I don't know if we're in the garden Or on a crowded avenue So am I Maybe millions of people go by But they all disappear From view And I 